Okay, we are recording, and it is the 20th of June, I think, and 2018. And this uh, Zoom call is going to be on understanding histamine as we start to go through everybody's genetics. This is one piece that we go through, and it's one piece that we go through um, a little bit more in depth because histamine can be a feeder of cancer. So just to go over this again so we're all on the same page. I also want to remind you that um, um, when we're getting results back, like results back on your genetics or results back on your IV gene test, I have put presentations together for the IV gene. You'll have to go to the website and you'll have to click on the resources tab, which is on the top of the website next to the store tab on our website and on the resources tab you'll see all our blog posts the IV gene information on how to understand what the IV gene score means and such is on a blog post so search down there's a search bar on our blog now so you can search for IV gene and you'll come up with that but you can scroll down and you'll see that also when we go through your genetics I don't want to go through um, the tests blindly. I mean, I want you guys to know what we're looking at. It'll be helpful for you to understand. So when we go through your genetics, it is absolutely required that you watch some of the genetic videos. If you click on the genetics tab, the genes leave clues, I think is the tab name. Um, it will, on the bottom of that tab, you'll see um, some other links to genetic pages. And now, uh, the Cancer Genes book, which is a video book, uh, it's not a written book, it's a video book, is up on our website. On the bottom of that uh, Genes Lead Leave Clues tab, you'll see um, uh, Cancer Genes, the book. You can click on it. The book is a living book, meaning it's constantly being added to. I only have done the first three sections of it. There'll be multiple, multiple sections as time goes by. So we'll be constantly adding videos. The amount of time lapsed in the videos that are on there right now are multiple hours of videos. I know that you're not um, undergoing your care here, nor are you um, looking to get a PhD in, um, in uh, functional medicine and genetics. Uh, however, learning as much as you can can be very helpful. So um, at least watch some of those videos before we go over your genetics so you really understand what we're even looking at. It doesn't just all look great to you. So uh, some of you want to nerd out more, some of you don't. Usually the ones who want to nerd out more are on these calls. So we're going to just nerd out a little bit on histamine today. So histamine is important. So we hear about histamine because we see television commercials about antihistamines. And if you have a stuffy nose, a runny nose, seasonal allergies, um, can't sleep, take an antihistamine and it will decrease the histamines in your body so that you'll be able to um, breathe fully and, and get rid of seasonal allergies. And is that true? Well, it certainly can be. The problem with taking a drug antihistamine is it will uh, reduce histamines, but then you get a reflux secretion of more histamine, and it's really not solving the problem. So even though I'm not against using antihistamines at different times, if you have a long-standing histamine problem, we want to address the reason that it's there and not just become dependent upon antihistamines that can have all sorts of other side effects that we aren't going to get into here. So histamine, what is it? What does it do? Um, it's uh, secreted in uh, the body and it does numerous different things. It's the biggest thing we think about histamine with histamine problems is the immune system because histamine acts as a vasodilator, so it increases the dilation of the vessels, it allows your immune response to attack a substance. So what does your immune system do? Your immune system kills things that are, that are invading your body, like a virus or a bacteria um, 
or a fungus or a mold, some living organism, a biotoxin is what your immune system is supposed to attack. However, when things get into our body that are not supposed to be in our body, let's say we eat a food substance that gets across a damaged gut border and that food substance was supposed to be too big to get across a healthy gut, but because we have a damaged gut border, that food substance gets across and our immune system fires a reaction. We end up with histamine being secreted by these cells called mast cells in order to bring a, a more immediate immune response there. So histamine serves a purpose to aid the immune system. Um, well, that's a good thing. But the problem is, is that your immune system is only supposed to fire against biotoxins, living organisms. And when it's firing against things like foods or allergens that we are absorbing, that we shouldn't be getting into the bloodstream in the first place, we have this immune response to things that aren't even killable. So histamine continues to be upregulated, meaning it continues to be secreted by the body because of the fact that these things aren't being killed by the immune system. So an example would be, my damaged gut allows larger particles of proteins across its membrane into the bloodstream, and my immune system sees that as an enemy tries to kill it, and because it's just a peptide or a part of a protein, it doesn't die, so it's constantly ramped up and you got this constant histamine reaction where it's continually being secreted. In a healthy individual with a healthy gut, that doesn't take place. But when we have a damaged gut, this is what takes place. Histamine serves other purposes too. In the stomach, it stimulates production of hydrochloric acid for the preparation of digestion of carbohydrates. In the brain, it functions actually as a neurotransmitter. It regulates sleep. It actually helps you get up. It's memory formation and brain arousal. So it's similar to glutamate in the brain. It's an excitatory neurotransmitter. That's why an antihistamine can help you fall asleep. It makes you drowsy because histamine is a stimulant in your brain similar to glutamate. So there are stimulatory and there are downregulatory neurotransmitters in the brain. Histamine is a stimulatory neurotransmitter. Uh, mast cells, I had already mentioned, are what secrete histamine in the presence of the, the, the need for histamine, which works on a negative feedback loop in the brain and in the stomach. It's secreted during um, um, uh, mastication. So you're chewing up food that uh, your, your patellate is released um, in your mouth, and that stimulates the mast cell secretion in your stomach. Well, we always think of histamine as a bad guy, but you got to think of it as a good guy too. So don't think of anything in your body really that's created in your body as always a bad guy. It's all about balance, remember. So life is about balance. It's about having that, that, that right amount of something in your body um, at every time. And it is literally that out of balance-ness that we have that causes disease. And then you have to look at, so, okay, is histamine the bad guy? We're going to take an antihistamine. Well, that might not be the right thing to do. At least at first, we need to look at what is causing this imbalance that is causing the excess histamine in my life. And that's what we want to look at. So a couple of reasons where that might be. I started down the pathway to explain one of them. It's an immune response. And one might say it's an aberrant immune response. The immune system is overactive. Um, that's the problem. Well, it's really not. It's really an, a, a correctly active immune response. The problem is, is that your immune system is firing against enemies that aren't killable. So going back to our example of a damaged gut causing peptides of proteins to get through that never should have gotten through. So we got these, these things in our bloodstream that are not broken down completely. 
our immune system is supposed to fire against enemies. So it sees that as an enemy and it's firing against that enemy. That's not an aberrant response. That's not an overactive response. That's a normal response. What's abnormal is the damaged gut wall allowed this thing to get through that never should have gotten through. So if all we're going to do is decrease my histamine response, when we decrease our histamine response, we're decreasing our immune response. So should a cancer patient take an, uh, an antihistamine drug? No, but uh, once in a while, it's fine again. Should anybody take it? You know, once in a while, it's fine, but you got to look at the reason why it's there. We don't want a chronic immune response because that's not going to be good for a cancer patient. We want a, a good, strong immune response, not this not this light, uh, upregulated immune response that isn't really stimulating T cell production to kill cancer cells. Um, and that's what uh, uh, high histamine levels will do over time. So that's why it's important to look for the cause. So is there an, uh, an increased immune response, meaning just that chronic, slightly upregulated immune response, increasing histamine levels, then histamine itself Histamine is not a killer, so histamine is not killing bad guys. Histamine's purpose in an immune response is to increase fluid to the area in vasodilate, and by vasodilating the cells to increase the flow of, um, of immune system cells to the area. The problem with cancer is that, I said, some cancers can then use histamine as a fuel source. So we don't want a chronic inflammation. So that's what will be produced in this, is a chronic inflammation that is simply upregulating histamine and, and um, uh, not really giving you a T cell spike that you want to kill cancer cells. So we have to look at what's causing this. And that's where we get back to gut function. And I'm using that as an example because that is so common. Now, there can be other reasons too. A person can have chronic biotoxins. I think I got a slide on this. I'm getting ahead of my slides here. Um, but maybe I don't. So chronic biotoxins like a chronic Lyme or a chronic Epstein-Barr or a chronic viral um, infection that is just this, this slight insidious response that um, is stimulated histamine flow could be an issue that we need to deal with that too. So damaged borders, gut border, lung border, uh, uh, blood, uh, blood brain barrier borders can cause this. Uh, chronic infections can cause this. Uh, chronic um, toxicities can cause this, that slight chronic ramped up immune response. Um, so these are the things that we want to look at, and these are things that can be then causes for cancer and all sorts of diseases. Dietary sources of histamine can be an issue. Those are usually not so much the issue, and we're going to talk about when they are, but there's histamines that are contained in foods. So we're not talking about dietary, meaning a food allergy that's causing a histamine response here because that will cause it too, but we're talking about foods that contain a lot of histamine cheese, eggs, nuts, fermented foods, alcohol, aged foods, kombucha, things like that are high in histamine. And when we look at your genetics that we'll look at in just a little bit, that's what we're looking for, whether a person should be eating those or not. And we'll talk about that. So trying to gain that balance, how do we do? It's really under, good to understand that when we talk about histamine, what are the things that are stimulating that histamine response? Remember, it's not so much that we're, to we're trying to get rid of histamine. It's about that you, it's a good way to think about it is that you have a bucket and you create, you know, you, you create histamine through your body, um, through different sources, and you get it in your foods um, through all sorts of things more than that are on this list. And if that bucket is filled up, 
and it overflows, that's when we're out of balance and it causes problems. Now that bucket is never supposed to overflow because you have a fail-safe method in your genetics. So you have a way to get rid of histamine. So just like anything else in your body, you have these metabolic pathways. You create a substance that has a purpose, like histamine, its great purpose as a neurotransmitter, as helping secrete hydrochloric acid in your stomach, as vasodilation to get an immune response to tissues, all these wonderful purposes. But then you have these genes that help get rid of it. The HNMT gene may be the more important of these. This is, a, this is a number of genes in this family, are the genes that create an enzyme. So remember, what do genes do? Most genes are the purpose is to create an enzyme. And that enzyme then acts on the local tissue or on a distant tissue, and that's how it has its function. The HNMT gene and the ABP1 family of genes create the enzyme called DAO. That DAO enzyme is what breaks down histamine. So when we look at your genes, we're looking at this right here. Actually, there's a little bit more than these, but I just took this little snippet out. So the ABP1 genes, if the person, remember if we look at genes like this person has no defect on this ABP1 gene, then on this one, they have a single allele defect. On the HNMT genes, this person is pretty toast because they have a two, 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 out of these genes, so they have a number of homogeneous or double allele defects on these genes, meaning that not that the gene is not going to work at all, but it's not going to work quite as well as if you did not have a defect. So this particular individual with genes like this may have a more difficult time making the DAO enzyme in the tissue, therefore they'll have a more difficult time clearing histamine from the tissue. The ABP1 gene is responsible for making the DAO enzyme mostly, mainly in the gut. So digesting the histamines that they're consuming, this person, a one and a one, probably doesn't have much problem with the tummy ache after they eat kombucha or a high histamine meal, but they might have problems with airborne allergies, might have problems with rashes. If they get a mosquito bite, they tend to react a little bit more. They tend to have more, um, quote unquote, um, uh, allergic type responses, maybe more stuffy noses kind of thing. Because of these defects on the HMT gene, they don't make the DAO enzyme very well in the tissue. So that's how we look at the genes when we are looking at um, the um, histamine genes. We also look at other genes like the FUT2 genes because this is really important for gut health because, again, you have to go back to the why do they have this purpose, this problem, their symptoms in the first place. You got to look, you got to continue to look deeper. It's not solely a genetic issue um, uh, of the, of the, what clears the histamine, but it can be what's causing the ramp up in the first place. So you got to look at leaky gut issues that we discussed. Um, all these different things can increase chronic histamine levels. So that's what you're going to look at for causes. Now, what do you do to look at for actually trying to take care of this? Well, uh, going back to, well, number one, you got to heal the gut. You know, that's why on everybody's uh, on everybody's laptop, you got that video that you watched when you were here about healing the gut. So healing the gut is of utmost importance. Reducing inflammation, finding out what's causing the inflammation. Do I have another a food sensitivity? Do I have a damaged gut because of chemical toxicity? Do there's just enormous amount of different possibilities there that we want to dig into. Reduce histamine foods, especially, mainly, if you have those ABP1 defects. Now, this person, I wouldn't necessarily reduce any histamine foods, but if a person did have a lot of ABP1 defects, we would say that maybe histamine foods are not going to be your friend, and we need to reduce these right here. Um, and then using some pre and probiotics. That's why we put just about everybody on sun spectrum, because I have not really met a cancer patient that has had um, maybe not twos throughout their FUT2s, but a lot of FUT2 gene defects. And the FUT2 gene is 
primarily responsible for healing the gut and creating butyrate and fueling the, the gut uh, cell regeneration. And that's exactly the, what's in the sun spectrum to help do that. Using digestive enzymes, helping uh, HCL production, helping break down carbohydrates, helping break down proteins, um, uh, supporting liver function, supporting phase 2.5, all these things that we want to do that we are doing on very many of you. And ultimately, it's for the purpose of reducing systemic inflammation. It's just this chronic insidious inflammation that causes issues. Um, that's the heart of most diseases today. So that's what we want to look at. What are some other things that are causing it? This is some things that I touched about. Um, different infections, H. pylori, Lyme disease, molds, um, uh, uh, parasites, and certainly toxicities. You can't, even if you're eating all organic, get away from a toxic exposure. Now, that's why we use some different products to reduce these things. This is the DAO enzyme itself. It doesn't get absorbed, but it helps with um, the breakdown of histamine in the gut, especially if you have ABP1 defects. And in products like histamine scavenger, curcumin boswellia, um, Anti-inflammatory um, products are very beneficial. And the best stress reduction head uh, kit is just to bang your head against the wall. That's what I use. But that's the idea of looking what fills the bucket. How do we deal with that? What are the causes why the bucket is overflowing? Um, and to me, that's the best way that you can really personalize.